Thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. If you're in the market for a feature-rich touchscreen cycling computer that does pretty much everything the trusty Garmin 540 or 840 does, but at less than half the price, grab some popcorn. This is the C606 Smart GPS bike computer that I started testing a few months ago. It's made by a Chinese company named Majin that was founded by a group of cycling enthusiasts in 2015. Full disclosure, Majin reached out to me to test this product or else I'd probably never even have heard of the company, much less this 606 computer. I get a fair amount of product review requests these days and I respond to them all in the same way. I make zero promises for videos or favorable reviews, but I'm glad to give anything a shot as long as there's no obligations. This weeds out the fakers and shady brands and allows me to give 100% objective and uninfluenced thoughts and reviews if I decide a product is worthy of sharing with you. Majin, confident in their product, sent it right over, no strings attached, enough said. Straight out of the box, I hit the power button and turned it on with an 83% charge, so I decided to get it going without consulting any instructions. It was all pretty self-explanatory. I scanned the QR code and loaded their proprietary One Lap Fit app on my phone. Same as you do with a Wahoo or Garmin or any other device. Pairing the unit to my phone was a breeze. I was prompted to update the firmware, cruise through a few more quick steps, and then the setup was done. I also linked it up to my Strava account so it could push all my ride data over and that process went smooth as well. The app itself isn't flashy, but it's intuitive and makes it simple for an average Joe like me to navigate through and customize all the settings. I was able to fly through the menus and get everything dialed within a matter of minutes, which for me meant allowing it to receive text notifications from my phone, setting a hydration alert every 15 minutes, and customizing my preferred data fields on the display screens. By the way, it takes me much longer to do this on my comparable Garmin. It's nice handling all this stuff directly in the One Lap Fit app, whereas with the Garmin, you have to make all these tweaks on the unit itself. The Magin has options for all the data fields I'd ever want to keep track of on a ride, and the displays are crisp and clean. For example, I usually like to display 3 second power and heart rate prominently, among other things. On the C606, while showing current power or heart rate in a larger field, you can also have your average and max numbers displayed with it a little smaller, which is a nice touch. Good job, Magin. <laughs> Magin, Magin. FYI, there's options for up to 10 data screens with up to 10 data fields each, and you can set up to 10 custom cycling modes in addition to the two defaults. That way you can have different displays set for road, gravel, mountain biking, bike packing, or whatever your heart desires. Anyway, I got all my screens set up and then I paired it to my heart rate monitor, SIMPS. Then I paired it with my power meter, also SIMPS. It also uses the same quarter turn interface as the Garmin mount that was already attached to my bars, so I clicked it on my bike and just like that, ready to ride. And yes, the Magin does come with its own quarter turn mount with elastic bands, much like the one that comes with the Garmin units. I took it out for its maiden voyage on a quick ride up around Fort Lewis College on a trip to Durango. The ride started with a steep technical single track climb and the unit kept chirping at me. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what was going on and I didn't want to take my eyes off the trail and be forced to dab during the effort. Eventually, I figured out that by default, the unit comes set to auto-pause the ride at 3.1 miles per hour. Needless to say, in my granny gear, I would easily dip under that threshold, which would then trigger the auto-pause and the chirp, even though I was still moving. Anywho, you can adjust the auto-pause down to 1.2 miles an hour, or just turn it off altogether, which is my personal preference. I'll cut right to the chase and confirm that after a few months of beating this little guy up, I'm very pleased with the unit and super happy I gave Majin a chance. If you check out their website, they make a bunch of other cool cycling products ranging from power meters to lights and even their own smart trainers. They're no joke and they recently had a big display booth at Eurobike. After digging in some more, I realized DC Rainmaker and GP Llama and those guys have been showcasing their stuff for a while. <laughs> so I guess I'm just late to the game like always. Anywho, at the top of this video, I touted this unit as feature rich and extremely well priced, so let's dig into the specs. The C606 is currently Magin's top of the line cycling computer and has a retail price of only 159 bucks. That's more than 60% cheaper than the Garmin Edge 840, which retails for $440. 
It's also more than 50% less than the Wahoo Element Roam V2 at 400 bucks. And it basically has all of the same features, if not more or better in some areas. Anywho, this is not a comparison video, but if you go feature by feature, the Magin more than holds its own. The full color 2.8 inch touch screen works fine with cycling gloves and it's big and bright and easy on these old eyes. It automatically adjusts brightness so it remains easy to see in overcast skies or full sun or in the dark. But if I did want to make manual adjustments, I can't. I haven't needed or wanted to, but I'm just throwing it out there because options are always nice, right? It's also IPX7 waterproof, so you don't need to worry about ruining it with sweat or rain or even dropping it in a puddle. And if for some reason it doesn't click into the mount properly and it pops off while riding, it comes with this little safety lanyard to keep you from completely losing it. The weight of the unit is listed at 105 grams, and what do you know? Mine was spot on at 105 on my scale. For comparison, my Garmin 540 is a little lighter at 84 grams, but it also has a smaller 2.6 inch screen. Let's see, what else? Uh, in addition to the touch screen, there are three buttons on the unit. A power button, one to scroll through data screens, and another to start stop your ride, and they're also easy to use with gloves on. I haven't had any issues acquiring GPS signal, and the battery life gets a thumbs up. I've kept it in regular, or what they call daily use mode, since I got it. If I'm riding around for a couple hours, it usually drains somewhere between 10 and 12% of battery life. So if I'm riding, say, two to three hours a day, roughly five days a week, it easily lasts me an entire week of real-world usage and then some. This falls in line with Magin's claimed 17 to 25 hours of battery life. They also state you can get 28 hours in long endurance mode, which I haven't tried because I haven't found it necessary. And when it's time to charge up, it uses a standard USB-C port, which is nice because I've got a zillion of those cables and you probably do too but just in case one is included in the box. With the C606, it's super easy to scroll through a bunch of options and upload your desired base map directly on the device as long as you have an internet connection. The map itself is clean and clear, however, the zooming capability is pretty limited. Sometimes I like to pull way, way out to a bird's eye view or go way, way in to really make sure I'm still on my GPX track and you simply cannot do that at this point. Regarding GPX tracks, you can upload them to the app and sync them with the device, which I've done and the process is easy and straightforward. But the longest track you can import is only 300 kilometers or about 186 miles, which is rather short for bikepacking. You'd have to break up and upload multiple files for longer adventures, which is definitely not ideal. In terms of turn-by-turn -turn navigation, Magin uses Mapbox, which is okay for most established paved streets and gravel roads but it's definitely not ideal for riding dirt and single track, which is where I primarily find myself. When using the turn-by-turn -turn navigation, there's also no way to turn off the auto reroute feature, and anytime I hit dirt, it tries desperately to reroute me to pavement. I really hope they add an update to address this. Otherwise, when I'm trying to follow a GPX track that I've imported, my screen is constantly inundated with reroute prompts, and I'm forced to turn off the audio alerts as well. To be fair, the C606 is aimed mostly at the road and gravel segment and was not developed with bikepacking in mind. Although, with a few simple updates, maybe it could be. As I already mentioned, I'm using the Magin to track my day-to-day -day efforts and local fun rides, which it excels at. So the mapping and navigation shortcomings, although a little annoying, aren't a deal breaker for me. But my channel is heavily biased towards bikepacking and ultra endurance mountain biking, so I at least wanted to touch on these areas in case you were considering this unit with bikepacking in mind. Magin also offers various accessories to complement the C606. The most notable is a radar taillight that notifies you of approaching vehicles similar to the popular Garmin Varia. It's called the L508, and I don't have one and I haven't tested it, but it seems like it could be an awesome addition. I was curious to see if it would mate with my Garmin Varia, and guess what? It paired right up and works like a charm. That was an added bonus I wasn't expecting. Chalk up another win for Magin. As far as uploading your data after each ride, no issues there either. If you get home and your head unit and your phone are on the same Wi-Fi network, it's super fast. But even if you just have cell service, it's still pretty quick depending on the length of your ride. And then it syncs my data to Strava pretty much instantaneously. It can also sync with training peaks and decathlon, and if you don't want to deal with any of that, you can analyze your rides directly in the One Lap Fit app. 
It gives you all the graphs and general ride info, as well as more detailed metrics like TSS, watt kg, calories, temperature, and everything else in an easy to consume interface. You can also export your rides as fit files to share with your coach or import to a variety of other platforms. I have not hooked the C606 up to my indoor trainer because I already use Trainer Road to handle all that. But the C606 is compatible of controlling smart trainers. You can set power and resistance levels or use saved courses or even fit files to replicate outdoor rides and control your trainer that way. The last thing I'll mention is a little glitch I had early on when using the machine with my Wahoo ticker heart rate monitor. At first I paired it through Bluetooth and noticed once in a while it would freeze and not display or record accurate data during some rides. I knew it wasn't an issue with the monitor itself because I use it with other equipment all the time and it's never had any issues. I contacted Majin, whose customer service was friendly and prompt, and they had me repair the device using AMP Plus instead of Bluetooth. It's worked perfectly ever since, problem solved. On the whole, the C606 has proved itself rugged and perfectly reliable. Other than potential improvements with GPX tracks, mapping, and navigation features that I mentioned, the unit has definitely exceeded my expectations. And I'll say it one last time, at a price point of 159 bucks, I think you'll be hard pressed to find another cycling computer with better bang for the buck. Magin has earned my confidence, and now I'm pretty curious to check out some more of the products in their lineup, like the power meters and smart trainers. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, for those of you out there using the C606, please share your thoughts and experiences. And for everyone else, don't be shy either. Make sure to leave your questions and comments and observations down below. If you felt this video was useful, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, shame on you. Just joking, but come on, help a brother out. Thanks for hanging out till the end. And until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.